we are group four, and we were assigned Kaltrika, and we were told to investigate the streams going into the bay to see if the streams affect the water quality in the bay. So, Kaltrika is northeast of uh, you see, Bergen is here, northeast, and as we zoom in, you can see it's north of uh, Arnold Center, it's about a 20 minute walk. And as we zoom in, you will see that there are a number of houses in the area, and also industrial area up here. So Kaltrika, or the bay as we will refer to it, is a swimming site and recreational area. Um, there is also toilet facilities just behind there. Uh, it's had a history of bad water quality, as you can see here, from 1994 to 2000, 2015. The green years, each one of these is from one year, uh, the green is when the CFU, the colony forming units, which is a bacterial measure, is lower than 100, uh, which indicates good water quality. The yellow ones are 100 to 1000, which is not as good, but still sufficient. And red is the bad one, which is over 1000. As you can see, there are a number of years that are red, and very few that are green. And now to the sampling is Jenny. All right, so basically we chose four different sampling sites. And these were chosen based on the accessibility of the sites, but also we took into account uh, recommendations from Bergen Municipality. So basically we can start off with site S, which is our first site, and it's actually in the bay. Here we're taking water samples for abiotic factors. We also took some sediment samples along a transect to measure biodiversity at site S. But basically we are focusing on the streams. Uh, so, oh, I've gone. Sorry about that. <laughs> focusing on the streams, which is site A, site B, and site C. <coughs> and from each of these sites, we took seven replicates uh, for TCB, so bacteria. We also took water samples for abiotics and for biodiversity. So let's take a close look at site A. Uh, here you can see Inga Lil taking samples from our first stream. And we had some problems while sampling. You can see we have the obstacle of this large boulder, but also the metal grid that uh, obstructs the outlet of the actual stream. But we can carry on to site B, because here we were met with the same challenges, again with this grid, but also here the water is really shallow. So whilst we're sampling, it's about five to 10 centimeters. So it's difficult to get samples from here. Surrounding this site is actually a construction site too. We can move on to our last site, which is site C. Here again, we were met with some of the same challenges of this grid and very shallow waters running through the stream. So even though the sampling was difficult and challenging, we did actually manage to sample and we did get some results. So we can see from site A and C, we have slightly elevated bacterial counts which indicate less than sufficient water quality, while site B is very low bacterial count, which indicates good quality, where you could basically drink from this stream. Uh, overall though, our results do not indicate pollution of the streams, although there's slightly elevated uh, counts of bacteria. I'm gonna pass it on to Marek, who's gonna talk a bit about our biodiversity results. Thank you, Jenny. That's the the hour. <laughs> yeah. For the biodiversity sample, we took uh, uh, a transit along the bay, and uh, we, we just sampled along in three spots, and uh, we analyzed the sample, uh, sediment sample in the lab. And we got different six taxonomic groups, and the most dominant taxonomic group that we get are the oligochid, followed by polychids and uh, the, the rest four groups. This actual, this, the numbers that you see are the actual numbers that we get from the sediment, sediment samples. So from this, uh, although the oligochid and polychids are resi pollution resistant to the or organisms, but it's really difficult to conclude that the bay is polluted. 
So we just further go to see the municipality data. And for that, I will be able to engage it. Yes? Uh, since the streams weren't as polluted as we expected, given the history of the day, we took a further look into the bacterial measurements done by the, by the municipality. And they used this 10 samples. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> 10 samples each year to categorize the day, and they use a percentage method to do this, which is explained here. Here you can see a plot of the raw data, and as you can see, uh, the color here indicates the categorization done by the municipality, the X here marks the mean, and the bar marks the median. And as you can see, uh, the mean and the median is not often within the same category given by the municipality, and there is a large variation within each year. Uh, but when you see this year here, you can see there is much uh, less variation and you can see that the three categorization method falls within the same category. And the median is the strongest measurement uh, measurements against outliers. So if you look at just the median here, you can see that almost every year it falls beneath the green line, which indicates good water quality. So we ask, is Calpolica actually polluted and is the question to investigate the streams actually justified? Well, that depends on the categorization method that is used. As you can see here, it varies between the methods. If we look at our data, you can see that we have much less variability. And there you can see that the three categorization method falls within the same category. So it seems that when you have little variation, the percentage method is okay. But when you have a large variation, as it often is in Costa Rica, the median is probably more representative. And now Tony is going to present some of the suspects for the variable data we have seen. Uh, yeah, the suspects, the first one is the toilet that Andreas mentioned. It's about 20 meters from the water, and it's what the Norwegian call it Uh there's, a, there's of course a tank there, and that is made of fiberglass, which is supposed to not leak. Uh, but again, the Titanic was not supposed to sink. So. <laughs> 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 here we have the general area of Almadoga, and culture is about here. Uh, we have a shopping mall here, a parking lot, has some boats, and a river flowing in. And we don't know if the owners of the boats actually dump their toilet waste in Vogen here, or if they actually do it outside in the fjord. But if they do that, that can explain the incredibly high outliers that Ingalil told you about. And then we have re recreational activities within the bay, uh, which could occur, especially in the summer, uh, here. Uh, and then we have some challenges that we met, and of course sampling, especially biodiversity, was one of them. So the question was to sample or not to sample? Because I don't know if you noticed when Jennifer was, ta was talking that the water uh, level was very low, there was no sediments there, and it was very inaccessible. And that made it hard to sample biodiversity. No plankton planktonic nets were possible, and uh, not sediment samples either. So what we did, uh, naive as we were, was do this with a talking tube, and hope for the best. And that, of course, didn't work. Uh, we found no organisms. But we still don't know how we should have done it. So if you have any suggestions to us, please tell us later on, and we can like, tell the next group for the next year. And then we have why men don't listen and women can't read maps. Because uh, that's us. We can't give you the why, but we can tell you that it happened. Uh, we, the ladies here, were supposed to find the sites uh, based on the maps. Uh, we told the guys, and they said, hey, good job, you managed. Uh, but they didn't really listen to what we said. <laughs> and when, when we were supposed to make the presentation, and they actually looked at the map, they were like, wait, whoa, 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 we did something wrong. And I don't know if you guys actually noticed, but Site C kind of jumped around a bit. And that's because <laughs> this is what Andreas told you Site C was, and this is what we were supposed to sample. But we didn't. We sampled up here. <laughs> a bit further away. Uh, this stream um, does not connect to Costa Rica in any way. <laughs> it goes up into the floor. Uh, but surprisingly, 
interesting enough, this did not ruin like our research or our report. It just pushed us in another direction. Uh, so yeah, it actually turned out okay. Believe it or not. There more? Yep. So the conclusions and recommendations from the streams that we consider. The first thing is we, we cannot really find any pollution indicators in the streams from our data, of course. And the second thing is it's, it's always important to have the sample, sampling of the bay and the streams at the same time to see the potential impact of the streams in the bay. And another important thing is it's, it's always important to have a consistent and replicate samples from the municipality. So we highly recommend that the uh, replicate samples be uh, done uh, when the, there is the, 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 the material analysis. Because if you do replicate samples, it gives an actual picture of the, uh, the water quality. And the last thing, is Caltrimica really polluted? Not really from our, uh, from our data. And so are the streams contributing towards the pollution in Caltrimica? No. So the further investigation should consider the recommendations and further investigation should be done. Thank you very much. Okay.